101 brought to you from RDC Studio in Kuala Lumpur. My name is Muhammad Abdul Hamid. I'm a public policy consultant. The topic that I will be sharing today is on behavioral insight and social impact. The focus of the discussion today is looking at how behavioral insight can be imp- implemented in achieving the sustainable development goal or in short SDG all over the world behavioral insight have been used by many countries especially in North America and in Europe in this part of the world Singapore has been an early adopter where the country has been implementing behavioral insight since around 2010 the behavior, behavioral insight what does it mean and what do, what does it refer to let's look at one of the most common behavior of human being and that is to do with our eating decision on a day to day basis most people realize that they have to eat healthily but we know that in reality we do overeat or eat unhealthy food why do we choose to overeat or take fast food which is unhealthy knowing full, full, full knowing full well that that choice that we are making on a day to day basis uh, may lead to a poor outcome in the long term for our own health so behavioral insight is really about the decision making that human makes the choice that we the options that we choose on a day to day basis and how does it have the implications on the public policy in classical economics the common assumption as well as in public policy the common assumption is that human are a rational being that we make decision rationally based on complete knowledge that we have but in reality after so many years of observing human behavior and measuring effectiveness of policy in many countries it has been recognized that a human decision making is not completely rational in fact uh, many scholars describe that a most human make irrational decision to explain the topic further let's look at one of the framework which is abcd framework from oecd in which uh, a stands for attention b for belief for formation c for choice and d for determination this framework describe the human decision making the constraints in our thinking process for example we know that our attention a in the abcd framework is limited in belief formation uh, people uh, we rely on mental shortcuts uh, and often over or underestimate the outcomes and probability in choice our choice are influenced by our framing and the social as well as the situation situational context of choices and d determination we know that our will power or determination is limited human thinking process can be described in two ways one is the automatic thinking and the other one is the second one is deliberative thinking system automatic thinking is really about the uh, the decision that we make on a day the choice that we make on day to day basis um the it is effortless um is intu- intuitive is done unconsciously whereas deliberative uh, thinking system consider a broad set of relevant uh, factors um for example before buying a house or buying a car we will think using a deliberative system so really behavioral insight is about encouraging rational decision decision for our own well-being it is an approach in public policy uh, which combine 
insights from psychology, uh, behavioral science, and social science with empirical evidence to discover how we actually make choice or how do we make decisions. One of the common frameworks that is being used to apply behavioral insights is PEAST framework. PEAST as in E-A-S-T. This framework was developed by behavioral insights team in the UK. PEAST stands for easy, attractive, social, and timely. In other words, if you want to divide or develop a policy or initiative to make it effective uh, and to encourage a certain behavior, you have to make it easy, you have to make it attractive, you have to make it social, and you have to make it timely. In applying behavioral insights, normally we look from public policy perspective, and that is from policymaker perspective. What kind of policy, programs, or initiatives that has to be implemented to cater to a certain issue or a given issue facing society. So that is the common uh, approach or common um, common application of behavioral insight. But we also know there's also the other approach in which uh, behavioral insight uh, is applied and that is coming from each of the individual member of a society or member of a given target group depending on what kind of issue or what kind of policy or incentive uh, that, uh, that is going to be implemented. Traditionally in public policy, uh, government all over the world uh, implement or formulate acts or regulations um, use ban uh, or tax, be it income tax, uh, road tax, impose fine for undesirable behavior. Uh, so those are the common tools used in public policy. Now with behavioral insight, there's a new approach to complement the existing policy approach. And that is by the knowledge that we know about how human make decisions, how human make choices, uh, and the knowledge that we learn from behavioral science, psychology, and relevant discipline in social science. In implementing behavioral insights in public policy, it is important that the relevant stage or relevant step in policy cycle, uh, be it in policy evaluation, uh, in agenda setting of a policy, in formulating a policy and implementing of policy, for instance, a relevant stage or phase of policy making uh, is uh, identified uh, where relevant, where uh, how how and where behavioral insight is applicable to each of the um, policy formulation stage or policy cycle. Uh, and really, behavioral insight is a problem solving, uh, it takes a problem solving approach. Uh, first, uh, in applying behavioral insights, it is important uh, to identify what is the problem at hand, what, what are the issues that are being addressed, that, are, that need to be addressed. Uh, obviously, uh, the target group for the policy or initiative has to be identified. Uh, the un there has to be a clear understanding into as to which behavior require changing and from there once the issue is clearly identified who are the target group what are the behaviors requiring change then the next step is really about developing what kind of intervention is required from policy perspective to address that and finally once the intervention has been developed it has to be tested uh, and measured in order to generate evidence and, and evaluate the effectiveness of intervention. Fortunately, there are already many guidelines that have been produced for implementation of behavioral insights from OECD, uh, from WHO, UNDP, as well as behavioral insights team in the UK.
from OECD, there's a basic framework, BASIC, um, to help as a guide for policymakers or researchers uh, to implement behavioral insights in the policy making as well as in the relevant studies for in behavior insight. Where B stands for behavior, again, it's very similar to what I have uh, discussed uh, or described earlier. It's about identifying what kind of behavior uh, require uh, requiring change, and this can be identified, for example, through interviews or by conducting surveys, or even from previous work or previous study that has been done. Once uh, the behaviors that require change are identified, then the analysis comes to play. The analysis of the behavior is very important to understand what kind of issues are being faced by the target group, be it in terms of psychological bias or in terms of constraints or limits in how they think. And once that the analysis is done on the behaviors, then the next step is really about developing uh, the strategy based on that analysis. How do you go about implementing behavioral insight in the uh, initiative or uh, given policy? And the next step is really about the real intervention uh, to be used for, to address a, a particular issue at hand. And finally, C is for change. Uh, how do you go about uh, making change once uh, intervention has been developed, has been tested, uh, can it be scaled up to the whole population? Uh, what kind of improvement required based on the lessons that have been uh, drawn or acquired from the testing that has been done? The beautiful part or the beautiful feature about behavioral insight is that it is evidence-based. As we all know, uh, in public policy now, people are talking about evidence-based policy and behavioral insights is really based on evidence, not merely assumptions. And one of the most common way or method uh, to generate evidence in behavioral insight policy making or public policy is to implement or to adopt randomized control trial or RCT. By using RCT, any given intervention that has been developed will be done on first on a small scale to evaluate the effectiveness of the intervention. Uh, and in that, in that um, RCT or randomized control trial, there will be at least two groups. One is a group that is a treatment group in which that group will receive the intervention and the other group will be a group that is a control group which will not receive any kind of treatment or intervention. But obviously, if, if there is a more than one intervention that is going to be tested, uh, of, um, then there can be more than two groups. There can be three, four, five groups depending on the number of interventions that is uh, developed through the intervention design. So, from the RCT or randomized control trial, which is normally done at small scale or pilot scale, uh, then lessons uh, are being learned as to how effective uh, the intervention is or interventions are, depending on the number of inter interventions introduced in the RCT. Uh, and what is important, the emphasis in RCT is the measurement process itself, where the effectiveness of the intervention is measured uh, by number one comparing between treatment the group that is receiving the uh, treatment or intervention and the group uh, the control group which does not receive any kind or any form of intervention that's one way of me measuring and the other one is to measure before and after meaning that before the group receives the intervention what is their level or the baseline um, effectiveness of any given policy. And this can be, for example, in education, uh, in health, and many other initiatives in various types of uh, public policy. 
And finally, in this first part of the discussion on behavioral insights, uh, I'd like to share the, some of the best practices that have been used uh, by practitioners in behavioral insights. Number one is about uh, it is very important to have a clear understanding of the issue or the problem at hand. What exactly is the problem that the intervention or the program is trying to address? This is very important. And I think if there is any step where a policymaker or a researcher has to spend most time or resource with, with uh, it has to be this uh, particular step. Uh, the second part, uh, because we are dealing with people, it is very important that uh, the uh, implementation, the design uh, of the intervention is done ethically. Um, there has been various guidelines that has been issued uh, to ensure that the uh, intervention uh, of uh, through behavioral insights is done ethically uh, to ensure that um, uh, there's sense transparency in, con in implementing uh, behavioral insights uh, to ensure that there is no uh, manipulation uh, or, 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 or uh, no 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 manipulation being done uh, to to get people to make certain uh, decisions like that. Um, and thirdly, uh, as mentioned previously, there has been various guidelines produced by various bodies all over the world. Um, and it is uh, uh, recommended that uh, practitioners use these guidelines as a, a procedure for them to implement the uh, behavioral insights. Uh, be it um, for a guideline produced by a behavioral insights team, uh, which is a UK-based uh, organization, uh, BASIC, which is um, a guideline produced by OECD, and there are many other guidelines produced by various bodies uh, around the world. Uh, and the fourth point about best practice is really about uh, adopting uh, experimental culture. And this is very important, and this relates back to uh, the approach that I mentioned earlier about RCT or randomized control trial. Uh, and again, it's about evidence-based policy making, uh, and it's about dealing with people. And we, because uh, here we are dealing with human beings, um, while uh, there's so much uh, work or uh, is done in the implementation and design stage of the intervention, the results will only be known after it is being implemented. Uh, and obviously, there can be a gap. Uh, between uh, the uh, outcome of a given intervention and uh, what is designed for by the policymakers or researcher, and therefore it is very important to experiment to have various types of, of interventions in the uh, in implementing behavioral insights um, to cater for no recognizing also that humans are diverse. There are various behaviors uh, depending on demography, age group. Um, depending on the uh, you know the, the uh, culture of, of the people and all that so it is very important that uh, the various type of multi-pronged uh, strategy is being adop adopted in implementing behavioral insight and finally uh, the best uh, best uh, practice in behavioral insight is also about continuous improvement uh, in that lessons uh, that is that, that are gained from previous experience are being incorporated uh, when in implementing the next uh, uh, program or the next initiative in behavioral insight. So that way, uh, lessons from various previous work or previous study uh, is being considered. Even though we, uh, there's no generalization that can be made, we can see in behavioral insights, but, but there are lessons that we can learn, especially now that um, behavioral insights has been uh, practiced in so many countries uh, since uh, for more than 10 years. So with that, um, uh, I conclude this first part on behavioral insights, the introduction of uh, behavioral insights. Uh, I hope that all our viewers um, gain a, a good introduction about the topic, uh, and I hope it's being very uh, meaningful uh, and useful uh, information and educa educational session for everyone. Thank you very much. I uh, hope to see you in the next uh, session in which we will talk a little bit more detail, uh, deliberating on how behavioral insights uh, 
uh, can be applied in making impact, especially in poverty and income in inequality. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.